And in this tutorial, we are going to be looking at PayPal IPN. Now, IPN stands for Instant Payment Notification. And this is a feature of PayPal that allows you to specify a link to a page and in your desired programming language, in this case we're going to be using PHP, you can actually process payments and different variables from your payment to interact with your website. For example, you may have registered on a website and had to make a payment for premium membership, for example. That's the example we're going to be using in this tutorial. You may have had to pay for something which then updates something on your user account with the site that you've paid with. So obviously there's a link here between our page and PayPal so we need to link our page to um, PayPal to process a payment and then from PayPal we pass variables from PayPal to another page on our web server which then acts um, upon that um, payment and does something to our page or to rather to our database in this case. So that's a brief example of what PayPal IPN is and what it does. But in short, if you are looking to charge your users for to access a specific area on your website, or in fact you just want to look at payments and maybe insert uh, records into a database based on a payment, then this tutorial is for you. This is what you're going to essentially do. Now obviously we're working in PHP, but the uh, PayPal IPN is compatible with um, other languages, so you can use other languages. But obviously in this tutorial, we're going to be looking just at PHP. Now, this is an example of a, uh, a login and registration script that I've quickly created uh, that allows a user to log in. For example, we've got a username here and a password here. So if I was to go ahead and type my username in here and then my password in here, now these values match a value or two values rather in my database. Now my database looks like this. It, the database is called IPN and I have two tables. One's called users which I, which I store user information and log you'll understand a bit later we're just going to log transaction IDs from PayPal. Now if you already have a database with username and password and, and you've got it set up so users can log in, don't panic. The only thing you really need to do is add an additional field onto the end of your table called premium or whatever you want to call it. And like I said in this tutorial we're going to be focusing on allowing users to purchase premium membership. So we're not going to be talking about shopping cart anything like that. We're just uh, giving the users an option to click on a PayPal button, make a payment of £8.99 pence and then this premium value here will be changed to 1 and obviously we need PayPal to pass variables we need to check them and then once the payments complete this value is updated instantly we don't need to manually check the payment we don't need to go ahead and, and open up our emails and say okay so and so has paid this amount and now we can manually update this value our PayPal IPN code is going to do that all for us and it's going to do it securely so we're going to make sure that we're paying the correct amount etc. So all you need to do if this is the effect that you want to achieve for your website if you want your user to be premium then this value here is going to correspond to 1 otherwise 0 so by default this is 0. Um, we're going to be rebuilding this database um, in, a, in a moment when we, when we actually start the tutorial um, but here you can see that I've got a user ID which is auto increment. If you want to follow along from scratch then then uh, obviously you're going to need to build the um, database tables. We have an auto increment and this is a primary key. You can see it's underlined here. We've got username and password which are uh, the username is varchar so variable characters 25 and password is 32. The reason it's 32 is we're storing a 32 um, character MD5 hash and that's just a standard form of encryption in PHP um, that we use with the P with the uh, MD5 function and then we have this premium here I've got it set to an int which is a bit too long because uh, obviously we don't need 11, 11 digits to this so you could set this to maybe a tiny int or, or something like that because uh, you only need one character which is going or digit which is going to be one or zero so you can see under the default column here 
I've got this to default to zero that's very important you want to when you're registering users you want to make sure this is zero we don't want to give them premium membership before they've purchased it uh, the log as I've already explained roughly is going to be a log of transactions um, in this case um, I have a log ID which is the same primary primary key auto increment transaction ID is the transaction ID that's processed through PayPal uh, this is just dummy data in here it doesn't mean anything um, so you can ignore this and then we have the we're storing the email address that the user paid with so in this case um, this will be blurred out for the purposes of the tutorial because it's not my email address um, but this is this is just an example so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that record okay so um, the second, well, the, the last thing we need to do, I mean, I'll, I'll just show you this this, um, this here first. So we're logging in with Alex and we're typing in a password. Uh, this is encrypted, but if we go back to our users table, uh, this uh, MD5 hash here corresponds to the value password. It's literally password in text. Uh, so I'm just going to click on login. Now you can see that I'm logged in now. Um, we've got a notification here, account type standard. Uh, this is using this is checked using a function called uh, is premium which we're going to create later on in the tutorial um, it says you are logged in just telling us we're logged in you can log out if you wish uh, that just is process is a simple script to destroy all sessions and then we have this button here called upgrade to premium which is extremely important um, we're going to be using this um, as a standard form that PayPal has has given to us um, it's available um, somewhere on the PayPal website, um, but it is available with this other code, this other login and registration code on the forum, on the phpacademy.forum. So if you're looking for the initial code, the initial login and registration code, we're not going to be going through all of that. 